Welcome back to another episode of the Church Candy Podcast. We've got an incredible interview with Dr. Philip Brassfield from Destiny Leaders. Now, before we jump in, I want to give you a special offer. You can go ahead and pre-order my brand new book, Plan Your Visit Playbook. It is about a marketing strategy that we use in our company to help churches all over the world get new visitors from digital marketing. See, this digital marketing strategy that we cover in this book teaches you how you can get 20 to 50 new guests to your church every single week. And now this book is going to be 100% free to you. It's my gift to you. All I ask is you pay like the eight bucks for shipping. And so you can go to churchcandy.com slash book to go ahead and pre-order your copy now. It should be releasing later this month uh, or by the time you listen to this, it might already be out. But regardless, you can pre-order it or order that book depending on when you listen to this at churchcandy.com slash book. Now, let's jump into the episode. Welcome to the Church Candy Podcast, the podcast of sweet ministry success. I'm your host, Brady Sticker, and let's jump in. Guys, we have a incredible guest today. I've got Dr. Philip Brassfield with Destiny Leaders. Dr. Philip, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Brady. It's great to be with you today. Man, I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, you guys just do amazing work. Why don't you, let's go ahead and just get things kicked off. I'd love to learn more about you and Destiny and like, how did Destiny Leaders, like, how did that even start? Like, I mean, you guys are doing incredible things. I'd love to hear more about that, man. Uh, yeah, uh, well, thank you. And we we do love leaders. Um, I was raised as a pastor's kid, you know, um, my dad pastored for 50 years, my granddad 60 years before him. So ministry had been in our family uh, long before I was ever in the world or thought of, but I had a real heart for ministry felt called to ministry. Uh, as a rule, I, I kind of uh, had an interest in academics, I kind of took that pathway, as opposed to just going immediately in though I'd done everything you can do in a church from from clean the toilets to mow the grass to, you know, to, to serve in all the positions, including senior pastor. Uh, but, but real had a, a bent kind of toward Christian education. And so I went into academics, worked in a couple of three different Christian colleges, both in the classroom and then eventually, um, in administration, winding up president of Carolina Christian college for several years during that season. Uh, I, I built a lot of relationships with senior pastors. And uh, had a real heart for them and for the challenge that the local church faces uh, to minister to the people that they have and to grow and to be effective. And um, in 99, decided, okay, I'd, I'd really love to take that passion out uh, with a little bit of a different slant of how to serve the local church um, by forming a network that's uh, oriented toward providing services to churches and to pastors. Um, credentialing, for example, ordination and life, yeah. that process and providing quality educational programs that are deliverable at the local church level. Uh, and one of the things that I, I think that made us a little unique in those days is the internet was this new invention. And yeah. most of the church world didn't know it as we're late adopters, typically. <laughs> so this was when this was late so this 90s, was, you said? Yeah, late 90s. And uh, and I had this vision. Matter of fact, the Lord spoke to me because I was intending to build this physical building uh, that was going to be a hub for ministry support for the local church. Uh, we were going to have departments akin to the FIFO ministries of Ephesians 4. So it'd be mm -hmm. a pastoral department. There'd be a teaching educational wing, a, an apostolic church planting foundational type ministry department. There would be a, a prophetic department where we dealt with revival and spiritual issues and yeah. worship. And so I kind of envisioned this, this uh, thing developed an evangelistic department where we had great leaders with that call that helped churches with their evangelism. And so I'm imagining you know, Chicago, Atlanta, Dallas. Okay, we're, we're you know I'm leaving the college. We're move, moving out of the kind of academic arena and taking it back to the street, so to speak, to the field. Where are we going to build this building? And the last day I'm leaving from my office, the Lord spoke to me and said, "Internet." And what I knew about the internet, you could write on the head of a pen with a magic marker. I, I just didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know anything about the internet, uh, but I knew the Lord had spoken to me. So I began to envision okay, how could we do what I'm imagining in a virtual environment? Now, this is the late 90s, right? Most people 
many people don't even have a computer. The Atari yeah. is the closest thing they've got to a computer. Yeah. And so in that way, kind of Destiny's always been out on the edge of utilizing the latest technology to try to accomplish very practical tasks in the local church. And so, uh, wow, we had 140 page brochure in cyberspace built. We thought it was the coolest thing in the world it was our office, you know, uh, was in our office in a virtual, the idea of people could visit our office from all over the world and dot, dot, dot. Uh, today, it is much more of a dynamic experience, as you can imagine, than it was in those early days. But it did set us off on that trajectory of how do we bring a quality church network with denominational quality support without the bureaucratic control that denominations often bring to the local church? And how could we identify the needs the local church has and then do what we could do to lighten their load and help them meet the need? And that really was the impetus of destiny from the beginning and remains to this day. Man, I love it so much. I think it's so unique. And the fact that you guys <laughs> knew back in the early or the late 90s when I was like in pull ups that, hey, this is going to be a, something online and, and you guys are going to stay innovative on top of everything with technology. I think that's so cool uh, because even I, I talk to pastors today that are pretty old school. And, uh, you know, you're, you're someone that has some gray hairs yourself, right? And you're very, very, um, what's what I'm looking for? You're open to trying new things and you're excited about technology and kind of where the world's going. And it looks like you're looking at that and saying, okay, how can we serve the local church while utilizing the latest technology and everything that's, that's there? Is that right? Yeah, that's pretty much sums it up. Uh, I mean, I think we do many of the very traditional things that a church uh, and pastor's network and leader's network would do, but we just do them uh, utilizing the latest technology as best we can. And that's been a moving target, as you know, better than I do over, over these last years. But we've tried to do that. Uh, Destiny Today has grown into a network of maybe 500 licensed and ordained ministers, about 200 churches in our footprint that we represent. And we try to provide everything from youth camps and a great national conference, which incidentally, I think a, about a month away, it's it's uh, a, our annual conference uh, is going to be uh, in West Monroe, Louisiana this year at a great church there called Christ Church. It's our 23rd annual conference. So we've done this 22 times before, and it's an amazing gathering uh, of, of people uh, in the flesh that and have friendships and build relationships and uh and that sort of thing and we'd love for people to come if they'd like to check it out and 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 check us out they can go to destinyleaders.com and and find out about that's called the gathering but so we do those traditional things we do regional connect events but we also do webinars online training and have an outstanding uh educational ministry that's designed to be delivered in the local church uh but yet uh but yet provided uh, through a virtual platform as well for the academic trend. So it's an internship program. Yeah, That was something else that we were kind of, not sounds like I'm tooting our horn. I don't mean, I'm just trying to describe who we are and what we do. Yeah, uh, Internship was a big deal for us from the early days before it was cool. Uh, we, were, we were trying to help churches uh, gather around this idea of how to have interns that served in the local church but also were trained academically. And from my academic background, you know, uh, my doctoral dissertation was on the church as a learning environment, you know, so I'm serious about it. In other words, I think that the, the most effective fertile ground for training leaders is in the local church. And so we've developed a, a great two-year internship program where people can actually serve in the local church while they study online with us. And they're, they'll be trained to serve, so to speak, with the attitude, the heart, and all of those things, not just the academics, but the heart to serve that's so critical for effective churches. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah. I, DLI, the, the program, what is it? Destiny Leadership Destiny Institute. Institute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I keep I keep wanting to call it Destiny Leaders in Institute just because it's Destiny Leaders yeah. Yeah. Ministry. Uh, but no, I think that's a, a phenomenal program. And like for any churches out there listening, like I, I, I don't even think Dr. Philip is doing a good enough job like tooting his own horn with that. Because what this is, it's an opportunity for you as a church to basically start your own internship 
that has you guys or what it's there's an articulation agreement with uh yeah to where it's like basically accredited to where they can transfer the credits from DLI into an accredited university and they're serving in your house and like the resources on how to start an internship program and all these awesome things. Uh, and it's relatively hands off for the churches because let's face it, like pastors out there, you're already raising up leaders and having them serve in different areas of your ministry. So now DLI is able to come and partner with you and give them some practical biblical training as well uh, and, and then give you resources on how to effectively have a systemized approach to your internship program because even at our home church at vibrant uh, you guys partnered with pastor michael and we're launching what we're right. calling vibrant college mm -hmm. and so it's a way for us to white label our own ministry school essentially to where it's our internship program to where we're able to have these students go through i think it's just such a phenomenal program and it's almost like a no-brainer for churches yeah. out there that want to have a way to develop leaders. I think that's so important. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and your program is going to be, as all these programs are, powered by DLI. In other words, it's yeah. your internship program, but in in we hear that a lot in, in the internet world, that this website's powered by some technology. Yeah. Well, that's essentially how it works at the local church <clears throat> level, is it's it's your people. They're organically yours. You know, they God's raised them up in your house, and and you know, let me backtrack just a little bit and kind of talk about the rationale for it, because here's yeah. a traditional scenario. Okay, a, a young leader comes up in your church. They've got potential. There's clearly a call on their life. Uh, often this conversation happens after high school. Okay, we need to help you get into a Christian college. So that student then, once they're enrolled, leaves the church, the local church of their origin, their nativity, so to speak, spiritually. Yeah never to return again in any significant leadership role. So, you know, it's like you drain them up, you raise them up, send them off, only never have them, never to have them come back. And you wind up trying to lead the church with, frankly, second, third, or fourth chair leaders because you've took the cream of the crop and sent them off somewhere to be trained. Mm. Mm. Well, that was a problem for me. I mean, I, I thought this, this is one of the barriers to great churches growing to their full potential is we can't constantly send the, the best of the best out somewhere else and never have them in, in the local church. So how would we, how do we answer that? Okay. We devise this awesome academic two-year program and you're right. We have a, an articulation agreement with a number of schools who've accepted our credits, but the formal agreements with Southeastern universities, one of the largest Christian universities in the nation based in Florida, and they can literally transfer from our program into a bachelor's degree program and complete the degree online with them. So they still don't have to yeah. go if, you know, but they're going to have had two years of getting acclimated to an academic uh, in world, all of our professors are ter terminal degree. I don't like the word terminals. Like, okay, uh, you know, they use it as it relates to airplanes and education. Yeah. I'm not sure. It's like, I don't want to take off from a, a place called the terminal, <laughs> you know, but we do it all the time. A terminal degree means that you have reached a doctoral level typically in that discipline. So all of our instructors who work with DLI are doctoral level type type instructors, but they're also serving in local churches. So there's not this disconnect kind of between the academic ivory tower and the real world Sunday morning, let's make it happen kind of thing. Yeah. And so they bring that to the classroom. So our students study through two years of training. Uh, there's a, a total of 10 academic classes in addition over those two years, in addition to their internship. And then they are ready. If they go on to university, they can, through us, they can go right on to Southeastern, never leave your local church. So instead of sending them off somewhere, you've had the benefit of their service for those two years and perhaps another two years as they get their bachelor's degree. It's, it's working great. Uh, churches all over the country are employing this as a mechanism for training great leaders. And it's one of the critical needs we've had in the church for a long, long time. Yeah, I, you're literally telling my story to where I was not, not to do my own horn, but I saw myself as a leader. I knew I wanted to get, go into full time ministry whenever I was in high school and the church I was serving at. They're like, hey, you know, or we'd been going to the uh, 
the YFN, the Youth for the Nations, uh, which is the Christ for the Nations, their yeah. summer camp uh, at CFNI in Dallas. And they're like, oh, hey, the youth camp that we go to every summer, they have a Bible school program. Why don't you go there? And I was like, okay, cool. And then I went there and I I didn't move back home. I, and, and now, I, and, which my, my case was a little bit different. I probably wouldn't have moved back home anyways, because now my, my family doesn't even live there. It's a whole thing. Sure. But regardless, that happens. All of my classmates in Bible college, there's almost similar stories. They were raised up in their church. And I don't know of anyone off the top of my head that ended up moving back home to serve their house, their home church yep. that sent them there. Yeah. And we know that everyone is not supposed to stay in one spot forever. Yeah. We understand that. But if we had the mechanisms where they could, if they felt led and, and, you know, there's something so powerful. I mean, we see so much dysfunction in the body of Christ. I think a lot of that is because of the organic relationships early on in that ministry formation were severed and and so it's like you know i have i have no accountability structure i have no there is so much benefit to being planted in a local church i mean that's the god way and so all dli does really is just provide a mechanism to encourage that it doesn't mean it's the yeah. only way it doesn't mean that uh, people shouldn't eventually go off to university or whatever but it just means that there are those who really ought to be with you for their whole ministry career and we say, okay, yay, let's keep you there and let's train you. There are those who need to test the waters before they go off to university. And two years of training while they serve the local church is a really helpful thing in their natural development. And so it's, it's a win-win on both sides of those equations. And Man, I will tell have... you, there is, there is one other thing I'd say about DLI. There is a, a philosophy that makes us a little unique in the sense, I know we're a leadership institute, it's even in the name, but our philosophy of leadership is about service. You know, I always tell our incoming students, I used to do it more when I did orientation, we have a team that does that now, but uh, I used to always tell them, look, I just want to get it right off the top, I want you to understand none of your call to lead. <laughs> I know you, you know, I'm called to preach. I'm called to this. I'm called to this department. And I always tell them, none of you are called to lead. You're all called to serve. And in your so service, good. God will give you influence. We're going to help you learn how to steward the influence God gives you while you serve the body of Christ. And so it's a philosophy of servant leadership that drives destiny. And all of our materials, programs, and, and systems are built around that to say, hey, you know, uh, let's not think about this as an elite leadership thing let's think about how can we serve you know jesus himself said for even the son of man did not come to be, to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many man that's so good and something my dad always says what what something he always says uh and, and he's got a ministry background he served in full-time ministry and now he's a business owner but he'll even say in business which i run a business that helps ministries that your your job isn't to be profitable and it's not to, your job isn't to make money your job is to serve and serve well and with excellence and then the the, the profitability all that's going to come after that right yes. like if you're serving at the highest level as possible and the same thing in your church like if you're serving your congregation the highest level possible doing uh the hard work and doing what you need to be doing your ministry is going to see growth from that and, and i think too often as leaders, we look at ourselves as leaders and not servants. So that, that was, that was so good. Uh, but you know, the truth about that Brady is that the greatest churches that stay the test of time remain servant led. Yeah. I mean, that's bottom line. It's not, you say, well, we want great leadership. Yes, we want great leadership, but we want them to be servants at heart. The great churches that are sustained and grow and continue to grow and, and sustain it over the long haul are servant led people have the heart of a servant. Yeah, that's, man, that's so good. I, I want to ask you this. Why do you think it's so important for churches to raise up, to raise up leaders, but yeah. leaders being servants? Why do, why do you think that's so important for the local church? Well, I mean, when you think about, I go back to the fivefold ministries of Ephesians 4. And so why do we have, why did Jesus take his complete anointings which is what I believe those were. Jesus was the consummate apostle, the consummate. He was the perfect prophet. He was the perfect evangelist. He, all of those things. 
you know, they're not really spiritual gifts. I don't get too theological today, but I mean, if you get right down to it, they're not gifts of the spirit. They are, we call them ascension gifts. Paul said that when he came out of the grave, he himself gave gifts to men. These are Jesus gifts to the church for what? For the edifying of the local church, the building up, edifying just this, you know, this biblical word for building up, uh, for the equipping, that word in the Greek is kartismos. Uh, it means uh, it's a term that was taken from the arena of the medical profession back in the gladiator, gladiator days. Mm -hmm. And so the field surgeon would set the brokenness in a bone and that was kartismos. And so, you know, Paul uses that term and says that the fivefold ministries are for the equipping, the setting of the brokenness in the body till we all grow up, <laughs> till we come to the, you know, the perfect man, the full stature. Well, I would say all leadership in a way has that assignment that we need more than one person serving in a leadership role because there's brokenness in the body. There is dysfunction, deformity, malfunctions, human nature, and these things need to be adjusted with a biblical model, and it takes more than one person to do it. So great churches that are ministering and reaching out part of the thing they have to do to do that job is to, to raise up leaders. And I think that I told somebody talking about the five-fold ministry the other day, they said, do you think there are today apostles today? And I said, well, not maybe in the sense of the 12 original apostles of the lamb. Yeah. Yes. The gift of the apostle is still here because here's the deal, Brady. When you look at a gift, it suggests the need. In other words, when Christ gives a gift to the church, then he's saying there is a need there, whether we see it immediately or not. Wow. So if we see the, the gifts of the fivefold ministry, that tells us that as long as the body is the body, as long as the church is the church, we're going to need the functioning of those gifts to meet needs in the body. And I would say to you, Dave, and, and that's a long way to answer that question, but why do we need leaders is because the, the fact that there are needs within the body that only leadership gifts can meet means that there is a constant demand for new leaders to be trained. Man, that is so good. I'm, I, wow, that was a great answer. <laughs> I, even just listening to that, man, I can think of that on an individual level too, right? If, if God is giving you personally a gift, then that he's saying that there is a need for that gift right? If God has given you, even if it's like a simple thing, like uh, playing an instrument or singing or making really good coffee, right? There, if that is a gift that you have, then that means that there's a need for that gift. That's Man, right. that, that, is, that would, is so good. We would say that you're responsible. Your responsibility is to serve the body in that way. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you can sing, then finding a way to develop your opportunities, to develop the platform, to develop those things is, I mean, you're good at what you do with church candy. You know, it would be such a loss to the body of Christ if you were not doing that. We need you. The body needs you, you know. And, and so I, I think all across the spectrum of leadership, uh, when we are empowered by the Lord with a gift, it's because there is a need within the body that's making a demand. And then we would connect anointing and say that he adds the anointing as we respond to the demand on our gift, then he anoints it to do a spiritual work within the body. And so, I mean, I've seen people who were great teachers and they had really a, really a proclivity toward academics. And, but something happened when they begin to teach. There was this endowment of power, you know, because they responded to the body's demand for education and equipping. And then God, so a lot of times we want the anointing before we've taken the step to serve the need or make the, you know, to serve the, the body. And a lot of times the anointing comes as we act. Man, so good. So good. What do you think the biggest issue or like, where do you think most churches drop the ball whenever it comes to raising up leaders or just leadership in general? <clears throat> uh, yeah, that's a pretty broad question. Uh, yeah. So there, cause there, there's no shortage of those. Drop yeah, the ball right. moments, you know, I mean, there, there's no shortage of areas you can drop the ball <laughs> as most of our audience listening that, that does it know. 
I, I think, you know, let's kind of go back to the thought or the demographic of the most churches in America being around 100 people. What keeps a church small? I think a pastor gets to a place, gets into a habit of doing everything, and it gets comfortable. It's the, it's the most effective way to just do it instead of train someone to do it. Yeah. And what happens often in those environments is you wind up with one or two people who do a really good job at a, at, at a few things that draws a certain number of people and then it plateaus. And so a lot of churches kind of look like college football games on Saturday, right? It's like there's 10 or 11 on the field who re need a rest and 60,000 in the stands that need exercise. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of what the local church looks like in many scenarios is a very few people who have, who have skills and gifts. And because they do, it's like, oh, man, we got somebody who can sing. Well, so we know how to do good ministry, but that doesn't grow great churches. The thing that grows great churches is developing great people. So in my world, coming from the world I came from, we knew how to have a good service. I mean, we could have a good church with 100 of us, right? But we just didn't know how to develop great people. I think when you marry the two, and you say, okay, it's not just our job to perform a service or preach a message or sing a song. It's our job to equip the body, people in the body, to do that as well. And when you begin to develop great leaders, they begin to draw people and churches begin to grow. I tell church pastors all the time, if you want to grow your church, grow your leadership team, pour your energy into your volunteer team and, and then release them. And as you release them, they're going to draw people. They're going to do for you what a, what a, you know, uh, what knocking on doors and, and, you know, standing on street corners may never do. They're going to, because they have the power of influence and relationship. And when they are engaged in the service of the church they're drawing people in their world to the church and so i think where we drop the ball probably the most profound way we drop the ball is getting comfortable with a few people doing 80 percent of the of the ministry and not developing other people and empowering them to do what god's called them to do yeah i i think that's absolutely right because i'll i'll see that too when so what we do for our churches right we'll run their their ads and, it, and the goal is to get new families to show up on a sunday service right mm -hmm. and it, i'll be honest like once once you figure out the right campaigns to run and the right follow-up sequences and how to get someone to show up on a sunday that's kind of the easy part right the hard part is the retention right how do you get that family to get assimilated and show up again next week and the week after that and the week after that and, and get their kids involved in kids ministry and their uh, students involved in youth ministry. And we, we've all heard the stats of, oh, people are going to decide whether or not they're going to come back next week within 10 minutes after they pull up on the campus. Right. And I think a big thing with churches is yes you need to raise up leaders yes that's important but people want to be raised up people want to be poured into people want to be discipled they want to get involved and that's so part of my testimony is like other ministries i've had church hurt from other ministries where there weren't opportunities to grow and mm -hmm. like my dad has tons of full-time ministry experience a business leader he at, at the church we went to, like he never had an opportunity to like lead a small group. He never had an opportunity to lead a Bible study or, or he wasn't raised up. It was, it was a, the Saturday football game, right? He, he was able to be one of the 60,000 in the stands, but he wasn't able to be trained and exercised to actually do ministry, to just, just to consume. Yeah. So, you know, I think, uh, Brady, there's both a spiritual and a psychological dynamic at work there, because often a performance culture, where it's come hear me preach, come hear mm. me sing, produces a consumer crowd that they have no job. We give them no job except to keep score. You know, man, pastor yeah. was really on this morning, man, the praise team missed it today. It wasn't, you know, they have no job, but just, just evaluate our performance. 
you know, and we try to get them to invite their friends to come hear us do what we do. <laughs> and it creates this consumer mindset that keeps churches small uh, because there are people that, okay, that's their thing. They're not going to get involved. They're just going to come and listen. They just tend to be anemic spiritually. They tend to be uh, they tend to be what kind of people instead of why kind of people. Wow. And I think that when we empower people, we touch the purpose in them. And one of the core fundamental things God does with all of us is gives us a purpose. You know, if you think about Genesis one, right when He created man, He said, "Okay, let's create create man in our image. That's identity, according to our likeness. That's our that's capacity." You know, in, embedded in the likeness of man with God is certain capacities that the other creation did not have. So the things that man possesses, saved or lost, it doesn't matter. They possess that's like the creator that makes them unique in creation, right? But if you notice the next thing he did, so they, he made us in his image according to his likeness, and then said, let them have dominion. The first thing God did is gave man purpose. Mm. He didn't just create him with capacity. He created him with purpose. And I think for church growth and leadership development, there's a real strategy there that if we're forever teaching people who they are, but never release them to do what they do, you know, that's the wisdom of God. He created them with identity, gave them capacity, and then said, now you have a purpose, have dominion over this. And incidentally, he didn't stop there. There was a fourth step. He blessed them. So then that's where that anointing piece comes. It's like, okay, so if you build a culture around, it's our job to help people know who they are in Christ, understand the capacity they have as believers, and that God's given them a purpose, and he will bless them in doing that purpose. It's a strategy for church growth and expansion, and it moves us from a performance culture to a developmental culture. And I've just found in experience that churches that grow and grow a lot have a development culture. They, it's not that they don't do a good job on Sunday with performance. They do a good song. They do a good sermon. They, you know, they get that piece, but yeah. they've added to that piece a culture where I'm speaking to your purpose. And it moves you from just me telling you what I think to telling you why you, you live. Yeah, so good. So good. This has been amazing, like just kind of breaking down church leadership and why it's important to raise up leaders. And I, and I think that's, you know, why organizations like Destiny and DLI are so crucial to ministry these days, because like it, it can be hard leading a church, leading a team and like doing all the things right, because you're not just a pastor, you're also probably a parent and a spouse mm -hmm. and like it, it, having to do all of those things yourself, the delegation is huge, right? It's easy for yourself to get burnt out. Yeah. And, and I also, my point was having destiny be a network for, and cause I think you've even said it before, like, oh, destiny is like a, we pastor pastors, right? Right. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, it is. And, and again, uh, I, I think, if I were going to build off that last statement we were having about leadership and why it's important for leaders, again, what destiny tries to do is speak to the purpose. In other words, when we come alongside a church, and this is, I think, consistent with what you would do as well, we are our most highest level of effectiveness is when we speak to the purpose of the organization we're serving. So when we come alongside a church and help their pastor find counseling or health emotionally or spiritually or in their marriage and we help do pastoral things with them we are speaking to the purpose of that church by serving one of the dynamic parts of that church and same thing with a conference it's not just about gathering together and hey we attended something with a few meetings one time it's yeah. like we speak to the purpose of the people that are there it's just our philosophy of leadership is like speak to the purpose of the people God's called you to minister to, to their purpose. You know, don't be constantly telling them your purpose. Your purpose is to help them to discover their purpose. And incidentally, that's where the name destiny came from. It wasn't my destiny. It was their destiny. This is a network and an organization where our job is to help you discover what God's called you to be and to do it at the highest level you can possibly do it. Now, in fairness, in doing that with them, we discover our purpose as well. And that's where things really get healthy is because we have these symbiotic relationships being built 
where in simply doing what God's called us to do, we all discover our highest level of purpose and greatest level of meaning. Man, so good. So good. I, I'm, I'll, I'll tell you this. I am super pumped for the gathering next month. Uh, me and my team are going to be there and we'll be, okay. have the, we have the, the privilege of uh, church candy actually leading yeah. a couple breakout sessions. Yeah, it's, you are. Actually. We're excited yeah, about that. Yeah. That, that's going to be awesome. And uh, so for anyone listening, where can they go to learn more about the, uh, the gathering next month? Sure. So destinyleaders.com, they'll find all things uh, destiny there, including the gathering. There's a tab for that. Also DLI, anything that they'd like to know about that. If they'd like to know how they can start a internship program in their local church, they don't have to have a thousand people. You know, the beauty of DLI is it's scalable. I mean, you could have one intern, two interns, and the yeah. system will work totally fine. No, no problems at all. They could have 42 and it's totally okay. Um, and so they can find out about DLI there as well and all things destiny and that's destinyleaders.com. Awesome. And we'll put the info for that in the show notes. And I believe the conference is, what is that? That first or second week of June, right? The yeah, it, seventh through the ninth, June 7th, 8th and 9th, uh, June 7th is just a big bash, big party. We invite whoever would like to come and get acquainted with us to, to register and come. We'll have great food and music and lots of fun. Uh, then our meetings will begin on Wednesday morning. We'll have daytime evening and evening sessions and lots of food and fellowship, lots of lots of fun things. And we'll have stuff for kids. That's the, another thing that we do every year is we have, we spend more on children than we do speakers on the stage. I mean, <laughs> we spend a lot of money and effort because we want the whole family to come. So, you know, if they're listening today and think, well, it's just another preacher's meeting that I have to leave my family. No, you don't bring them all. We have stuff for youth. There's a youth conference going on during the gathering as well uh, for youth pastors and, and youth from their churches. And so uh, something for everyone. That's June 7th, 8th and 9th. It's in West Monroe, Louisiana this year. And so it's an awesome church called Christ Church. Man, that is awesome. Well, look, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to hop on here and just really do a deep dive on raising up leaders and the why behind that. Just such an awesome episode. Uh, and so, yeah, guys, please go check out DLI, check out Destiny. We'd love to see you at the gathering next month. Uh, any final words before we wrap things up? Well, I'll just say, you know, first of all, thank you for what you're doing for churches. You, you know, you're doing an amazing job helping them get their message out, helping them bring new people into the room. That's so important for a church. And you guys do it as good or better than anybody I know. And so thank you for that. Uh, I would also say to, the, to our audience that, you know, most of them are Christian leaders and I just want them to know they matter. They matter to God, they matter to the kingdom and they matter to us. Uh, in these days in which we're in, we can't afford to lose a single one. And just know that if there's any way that we can ever serve you or assist you or help you, irregardless of your role in ministry, then please check us out. Give us a call. Let us know because it'd be our great pleasure to serve you in any way we can. I love it. Awesome. Well, guys, thanks so much for listening and we'll see you on the next one. Bye now. Man, what an incredible interview. I love Dr. Brassfield and Destiny and everything they're doing. You can check them out below this podcast in the show notes. Uh, thank you so much for listening. And I want to remind you, you can pre-order or order your copy of Plan Your Visit Playbook, depending on when you're consuming this episode. Uh, you can go to churchcandy.com slash book to get your copy today. And of course, I've got to give a shout out to Soulbox. I reached out to them on Instagram and they said that it is cool for us to use their song, Nobody Like You, as the intro and outro to this podcast. So go check them out on Spotify. They've got great music, super, super awesome Christian group. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next one.